words of welcome and acknowledgement for all of you. Welcome to uh, Seo and welcome to our homelands. I look forward to spending the day with all of you, thinking about how we can be better in this place, on, on our homelands, in our environment. You know, we have a, a winter ceremony that are starting up in our longhouse. And all the time when I was growing up, the first thing on the table to feed the people was all those herring. But for many years now, we come together and the people say, where's, where's the herring? The relationship between uh, sayout and herring is, is that it's, uh, it's a foundation food a food uh, that our people need to live. Our elders tell us that we need herring for what it brings to us. Besides the nourishment, it, it has the, the necessary oils that we need. It's a food that we use in the, in the winter gatherings of our people in our longhouses that, that supports our culture. We see herring occasionally. We see them coming back, but soon as we see them come back in any type of abundance, we almost always see automatically a commercial opening and the, the huge saners and, and uh, come in and they swoop up all the herring leaving nothing for the people anymore and, uh, and, and it's uh, heartbreaking. I started commercial fishing when I was 12 years old. I started herring fishing in 74 and it was in 1976 we were fishing herring up in Comox, being sound. And what happened is the fish was bluing. The herring spawned. And so we didn't get it. The sailors didn't go out sailing fishing. And we didn't get a quota. So what DFO did is said that they brought us down there. And we took the whole resin stock in 15 minutes. We got our quota. But at the sake of what? What are you going to do? Like you got commercial fishermen and, and the DFO call the shots. That's what they do. Fishermen hide stuff like that. At this time, there is no information available on the appropriate conservation limits for Pacific herring based on ecosystem interactions. That to me says it all. The whole thing is based on lack of information on the importance of herring in the ocean ecosystem. And I think we should all be aware of that and pressure them to ensure that they have a notion about what the effect of taking all that herring out of the ocean is on the rest of the life in the ocean. Thanks. I came here to collaborate more than anything is how can we work together across cultures ethnic backgrounds, cross governments, uh, I don't care what political stripe you are, what can we do to get the job done? If you look around the room, there aren't many red Indians here, so there's mainly Caucasian people. So we're very fortunate in that Europeans, the settler society, the Caucasian people want to come forward and work with us across cultures. That's awesome because it wasn't that long ago it was illegal for us to hire lawyers to represent us, to defend ourselves. So now coming here in this venue, meeting with you folks, is a way of saying, not taking this lightly. We can't point fingers and blame anybody, that we need to step up, come up with some solutions, ask for help when we don't know what those solutions are, or what they look like, and then move forward, sort of in lockstep, if you will. We need to align management with herring biology. If we think about fisheries as mobile predators, we recognize that fishing boats can move to where the herring are. If the change of distribution of herring changes, the fisheries can still go there, but local communities are fixed in place and have specific long-lasting relationships with those local herring populations and it's not possible to recapture the value of like a healthy, abundant, beautiful spawn when it's lost. Um, so we, we tried at Pacific Wild, we're, we're mostly a communications-based organization, um, so we tried to think of different ways that we could communicate the importance of this little fish to the public. 
And one thing that came out of that was a variety of different comparisons. So the quota last year was around 21,000 tons. And Vanessa actually did some pretty serious math in terms of how much uh, Chinook salmon needed to eat, um, in terms of how much a humpback whale <laughs> needed to eat. Um, and we came up with 100 humpback whales for an entire summer, or up to, it was kind of between 500 and 900,000 Chinook salmon for a year. And that's something that's not being talked about right now. Um, and it's something that needs to be talked about. I'm a sea captain. I've been at sea for uh, the last 20 years. I've been fighting for bluefin tuna in Libya during the war there. I've been fighting for whales in Antarctica. Um, I never thought I'd be here 20 years after being at sea fighting for these tiny, tiny, small fish. 20 years ago, I never would have imagined that. Um, we've been working in support of First Nations uh, in North Vancouver Island for the last couple of years on the fish farm issue, the salmon farm issue. That's when we first started seeing lots of herring inside these fish farm pens. Uh, I think we are very lucky to all be here tackling this issue. Uh, herring at the bottom of the food chain, and I hope after this event, um, or during this event, uh, we can bring this, this fish that's at the very bottom of the food chain to the top, to, as, as, as the top issue, as a top priority here on the coast. So. The herring are a bridge between the plankton and the larger species. It feeds everything. And as a settler, I was ashamed and in tears to see my government doing this, supporting the exploitation of this resource and your heritage for profit. All of us, white, brown, black, pink, whatever, need to stand together to preserve our incredible natural heritage that has been here since creation. So people think of us as ocean-going people. Yes, we're ocean-going people. People reflect on us as salmon-going people, as being sustained by salmon. Yes, we're sustained by salmon. But for us in our area, herring was actually a greater protein resource than even salmon. That comes directly from our elders. But that knowledge, because herring have been depleted for such a long time, is almost gone. Here, in this part of the island, this part of BC, herring has been gone for generations. Now our children, my children, have no idea what they're missing. It's the people that know, that really should be speaking. We don't really have anybody left. We hear from the government that their whole premise and their whole decision making is based on local and indigenous knowledge. But we're not seeing that when it comes to herring. We, you know, we're not seeing government fisheries management based on that same approach. On everything is connected with it. They're looking at species by species. And when the islands trust and Hornby Island Conservancy and the Association of Vancouver Island Coastal Communities, all of them almost unanimously voted to suspend the fishery and asking it for it to be curtailed, and the government rejected that. And they say that therefore, local knowledge and indigenous knowledge, how is that when all of the communities are united in defending the ocean? And DFO said, we got this right. We've got management practices right, even though five of the six areas were closed. We got this right. And then we find out just recently this last month that they were wrong that they overfished, way overfished last year. Again, they're not listening to you. Together we can be heard. When we stand united as coastal people, we can be heard. This is really encouraging to see all of you here today. So where are we going from here? We hope to cooperate with you folks. We hope to support your, what your initiatives are in any way that we can. 
We're going to advocate for a herring recovery program. We're very concerned about the winter fishery that's going to be opening within the next couple of weeks. We're going to collaborate with politicians. We met with, with uh, your MLA, Adam Olson. We've obviously met with Gord. We're going to continue working with him, with Scott Fraser and Lana Popham, uh, because obviously there's lots of deals go on between uh, Victoria and Ottawa. We want uh, the Minister of Agriculture, who's responsible for fisheries, to go back there and support us, work with Gord, Elizabeth May, obviously, who's been very supportive with us on this. And we're going to continue working with Pacific Wild and Sea Shepherd. I felt that today was really great that we could get groups together on this really important issue. My wife's from the Heltzik Nation. My kids are half Heltzik, I guess, in that sense. So I've, I've watched with great interest them asserting their sovereignty and their nationhood over governance of over a resource that's really vital to their way of life way of being and knowing that closures of their closures here their pressure gets shifted i have worried about sort of the the commercial herring fishery you know in the gulf sort of being the last one if that commercial fishery is halted It'll allow that space for uh, the herring stocks to restore themselves too, right? Restore balance. So I think coming together today to connect on that and what will come of that, uh, I'm looking forward to. Thank you all, Heitzka Thank you all for being here today.